Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use any files to um, create a save and load system because you can no longer use um, game save and game load. Okay, so to start off, create two scripts, one called script save, or just scr save, and one called scr load. So, scr save and scr load. Okay. Once you've created those, you can just tick them off and leave them for now. Okay, now go into... Oh, right. I should probably mention this. Okay, I've already got a platformer system set up. If you don't know how to set up a platformer system, then I've recently added a tutorial on how to do that, and I'm going to be working off the... like, generally the same system here. Okay, so... Yeah, go back to that tutorial set that up, or you can just use it on a game that you've already got running, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so to start off with, I've gotten two variables to save and load, so it's just the player x and the player y, so I store those in global.player y and global.player x, so those are set at the player's create event, and then in the player's step event, they are updated here. So that's every step they get updated. Okay. So those are the two variables I'm going to be saving. Oh, another thing. Another thing in the step event is to actually save and load it. I've got two key press events. So keyboard check release order S. So when I press the S key, it'll run the save script, and when I press L, it'll run the load script. As you can see, it's obj save and obj load there. That's because I've set up two objects and in their create event they run the save and load scripts. So I'll show you that now. So over here I've got an object called object save. And in here I've got that code there. Now you're not going to know what that means until I show you the script so it's generally the same for the load object as well. Alright, so in script save is how we're doing it. You start off by opening an ini file. Now if the ini file doesn't already exist, it'll make it automatically with that. So argument zero allows us to set it when we run the script. So that's the name of the file there. Okay. So then to that ini file we write the global player x, so just the x value of the player and the y value of the player and save that into the ini file, and close the ini file, um, and then if the file exists, like the file that we just created, if the file exists, then we know it worked. And I've actually got to change that to that. Okay. So you can tick that off. And then in object save, you I use file as variable, and then get save file name. This brings up a dialog in Game Maker that allows you to select a file just using the normal explorer that Windows has. And then I run the script and set file as the file name. Okay. And then with the load script, it's generally the same thing. So this is the object here. You search and find the file and then double check that it exists and if it does run the script with file as the argument and then in the actual load script this is the code here so any open file that you selected and then object player dot x equals the x file that was saved and object player dot y equals the y value that was saved and then any close and that's it. Okay, so then when you run it, okay, so you've got your little platformer here. So, yep. Okay, so now I started off about here. So I'll just move and jump up to the top. Now press A to save. Now it's given me this explorer to find and name the file, so I can save it to my desktop and just call it save. 
So, save that. Then it comes up with save complete. Hit OK, and I can exit away. If I minimize this, and go to my desktop. Then over here, there's this save file. So just here. Now, if I open that, and open it with Notepad, then these are the values of the player that were saved. Okay. So now, if I reopen Game Maker and run the game again, then I hit L. And once again, I get this browser. So I'm going to go down and find my file, which is here. Hit open, and bang, my player has moved to the safe position. And from there I can still move around and jump and everything. Okay, so yeah, that's how it's done pretty much. Now that's really simple. You can also use it to do things like saving full levels or for like settings. If you've got any settings in your game, you can use any files to save those settings and then reload them in the next run of the game. But yeah, that's a simple way of saving a game. So obviously the more objects that you have, the more things you're probably going to need to save, which means the any file gets more complicated. But yeah, that's the basic one. So, um, like, subscribe, and hope this helped out. Thanks for watching.